Hello and welcome to another Beyond Trust session. Today we're going to talk about privileged remote access and a specific feature that's part of the audit and compliance. A bit underappreciated, it's called session forensics. So let's dig into it. So how can we use session forensics? Every time someone connects through PRA with session forensics enabled, we can capture any keyboard or mouse input, meaning every time someone launched something or every time someone typed something in, we can capture that alongside the recordings. That could be a malicious database query or maybe someone modified the network configuration or maybe someone installed an inappropriate piece of software. In this example here, we find Winamp being installed on one of our servers and we want to find out who the culprit is, who installed that piece of software, how did it get there? In order to determine that, we're gonna head over to the PRA slash login admin portal and then access the reporting menu. This is where we can access different kinds of reports and also filter down based on multiple different attributes. One of them is session forensics. So with this field here, we can type in our keyword or wildcard, maybe filter down based on additional attributes here and then access the results. Now in my example here now shows all of the hits for the keyword Winamp and this is chronologically ordered. So if you start on top here, we can see there was a license agreement that was accessed. And when we click the view recording button here, it opens that in a new window and it jumps directly to that event where that capture took place. So we can clearly see how that person installed that piece of software. We don't have to search the recording. It jumps directly to that event. If you want to understand some more details around that connection, we can head back to the search results and access the session details. Here we can clearly see who the session actor was, where they came from, public and private IP, and what type of connection that was. We can see it went through a jump point here, and uh, we can also see that the protocol was RDP, so it was done through a remote RDP connection. And how do we configure session forensics? How do we turn it on? There's a couple of settings, configurations for that. Uh, one would be for any jump items that are involving a jump client. For that, all is needed is under configuration to enable session forensics. That's an easy one. For anything without jump clients, any remote RDP based connections, it does involve a service account, ideally an AD account that we can leverage for that. The first thing you wanna do is with that service account in AD is to add it to the PRA vault, that's a requirement. If you haven't used the vault, please refer to our documentation, beyondtrust.com slash docs, under how to you can access the Beyond Trust vault uh, documentation. Once you have that, you can utilize that as part of your jump point configuration. So any non-jump client connections, such as remote RDP, they always re require a jump point. Uh, when you create a new jump point instance, you can specify the service account that would be used for RDP sessions. So this is where the necessity for the account being in the vault and from here, you can select it as you build your jump point instance. Now this account does not have to be administrator, uh, let alone domain administrator, but it does require privileges to create remote services and to access remote file systems. And once 
that is configured and in place and verified in your uh, properties for your jump items you can turn on session forensics now this can be done through session policies uh, in a more scalable fashion but over here you have the ability selectively to turn session forensics on for any you know, jump point based or remote RDP based connections. And you know, once that is in place and you jump to an item, as part of the establishment of the connection, a temporary file will be copied to the admin share that is then being used to capture mouse and keyboard input as part of that session. Now again, this is only required for connections that go through a jump point, such as remote RDP connections. For any jump client-based connections, you do not need that service account in place. It just works by turning on that global setting in your app and console here under configuration. 